You know, you thought I would remember to move this bag. So I've got the IRC overlay in the top left, and uh, yeah, that's what I need. A lot of th a lot of window windows pop up here, and I can't access them because the IRC is over it, and I get the IRC window instead. Which is pretty annoying. I guess they don't do that. Get used to zerging it and kind of forget that people actually don't do it that way. Wow, those jellies hardly took any damage from that uh, flame. That's interesting. Should be able to evade that, yep. A scurrying sound nearby sets your nerves on edge. If you could lower one of the nearby ladders, you would be able to climb up onto the rooftops. It seems like a waste of resources to fight every mob on the EE. at 11 hit points. Oh, 
but that wasn't. Yeah, I kind of figured that might happen. Give it my incorporeality to your own. My lightning resistance buffed up. I don't know if that was the better idea or not. You're so fun. Thank you. Go back to incorporeal. Incorporeal. I don't see how we're going to get a lot of those cards. I mean, there's really not a lot of time in this uh, event. You only get, you get ten of those modes to get one card. Somebody's a little bit cynical. They're saying they're. Uh... Yeah. Somebody's saying that you can just buy cards at the DDO store in a week. Which I doubt, but I understand the sentiment. Nope. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to do some farming here and there and some questing like normal and see what happens. If I can get a couple items, I'll be happier. I, my frustration is the same frustration I had with the anniversary card event, which was I never saw a 9 or 10, which is pretty crappy since that's where all the really good loot was. But, you know, whatever. Oh, you can trade is not a valid... ...response to that. Who is going to trade you any other card for a 9 or a 10? 9 or 10 are rare. There's not enough of them, therefore you'll never get one. If you don't get one in one of your things, you'll never get one. So, uh, that's my frustration with it. I think we all got together. Whereas I think before, from my understanding of Maybar, all you had to do was, as long as you did the grind for the old Maybar, then you got a chance to get every bit of loot, period. Which I like a lot better. Uh, we might try in here anyways. So might be a mute, mute point. Yeah. Screw that. Auto's box. Oh crap. I 
Yeah, let me pay fifty dollars for a plus five tome when I can get a plus what six supreme tome for the same price? <laughs> right. Shrining? It's time really? To deal with him once and for all. Yeah, I'm gonna shrine real quick. Just so I have enough uh, things. Spell points. I don't care about buffs necessarily. I just want the spell points. So I can consecrate effectively. Yeah, the point is, there was, there, no one's going to make a reasonable trade, because there's nothing reasonable that you can trade for. Especially since you can get those uh, Eternal Flasks on the Anniversary event. Plus five tomes are limited, as I understand it, so it's not as big a deal. That's awesome. Sit here and take a nap while y'all open the treasure. Come on, nope, nope, nope. Uh, that's frustrating. I was really hoping with a full party in EA I would finally get my drop, but nope. Oh well. Nothing I can do about that. Lots of stuff going on. There's a shroud up and several other things. So we're doing the last part now. The exciting part on E. So yeah, I mean, I, I like the event happening. I like the chance to get Maybar loot, which I've never been able to get, but I am slightly frustrated at the implementation. Let me go back and check. I'll put this up real quick while I do that. So, yeah. I got the... 
certificate already, which is nice for my first four cards to get a certificate. I probably will want level 16s of stuff. Just selling real quick and I'll be right there. Because I tend to do epics, and if I'm, I'm probably going to do iconics, so it makes sense to have the higher level stuff. So 16, 20, 24, eh. I'll have to check the differences and see if it's worth it, but then again, we're talking about 24s or card 10s, 20s or card 9s. So Cloak of Night, Robe of Shadow, seem easy enough to get. Well, I guess if I can get the wraps at 8 and 12, go ahead and get them at 8 and 12. Of course the rubies are 10s, which is... Uh, I don't know about the docent. Yeah. potions and stuff. Uh, I don't generally use that kind of stuff, so we'll see about that. Well, what the heck were you talking about? You wanted the hat? Oh, the Mabarian head spider. That's the one you wanted. The jack-o'-lantern. Those would be neat to get, but you know. Not counting on it. Oh yeah, I need to let the cats out. The High Striker, one of the classic carnival pastimes. Incredible well. prizes can be won by ringing the bell. We will go. <laughs> well, hey, you want the complete set? I understand that. I'm a collector. I understand wanting the full set of stuff. I would like some more uh, cosmetics just to fill out the slots. Just so I have something equipped in every slot, basically. Do we have a trapper? Or do we have someone with good reflexes for that? I mean, I generally don't change my cosmetic. Most people, most of my characters have the uh, spider cult mask. What the? All right, step back from that. Oh, is he really a new player? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Too close. Anybody can rise out. But, you know, I'd like to have uh, more stuff to do on the Ice Games Festival and the uh, thing, stuff next time. Get some more free uh, resists. And maybe have stuff to switch out for the spell power. And actually use all those stupid recipes that I have in the bank. Thank you. But I don't want them enough to pay for anything, so you know. past lives to get a decent trip DC. Is that what it is? All those fighter past lives and 
full 20 fighter and all that. A high striker game stands waiting for a true strong man to ring the bell. Champion. We are all over the place. I have no idea where anybody is. That was fun looking through that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Skunk, something like that. I like the idea of that stuff. I got, I think I got fire and cold on Shaw here. Resists, but cold ones were just not dropping. I was trying to get a cold on somebody else, and uh, they were just not dropping. Yeah, I'm not touching it. <laughs> And I don't have anybody that's a cold caster at the moment, so didn't see the point in doing that. I figured the resist, you know, anybody can use. It makes sense. Maybe if I make a druid or tear somebody into a druid or something, I'll make more sense to do glaciation stuff. Hey, it's open. I almost, right then, hit the button for uh, my sorcerer's abilities. It's like, oh yeah, I'll put a wall of fire up here. Oh yeah, I'm on the shot. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, ever since I burned myself out on Cove, I've been kind of careful not Try to try not to do too much farming on festivals, so I don't just completely quit the game for a while, <laughs> like I did. Because um, that's not fun. I'm still 80%. I'm not going to... Right at the moment. Oh, well, if my rubies would trigger on my weapon, get some knockdowns, that would be awesome. There we go. I do like festivals for the limited time directed farming. Oh, I only have a week or two or whatever to get these items, so let's go ahead and do it. It's an easy choice to make. Do it now or wait a year. That's, uh, I do need the cove back. I forgot to upgrade my Bart's hat. It only has plus four charisma instead of plus six, which is annoying. I want to finish off. Uh, I think Shaw's room class needs to be upgraded. Let's see. Yeah. 
it's only cure critical and there's no restoration on it, so I want to get that up to heal and the restoration make it very handy. And of course, get the timer down to five minutes. But because really, there's just so much gear out there that unless I specifically see something and for a character I'm playing. And bookmark it or something to remember it. There's just so much gear out there that I don't have that I don't even really know about. Did somebody fear me? Did I forget my fear block again? Oh my gosh. There. I found it. As a fire savant, I really hate sleep storm. When people override my walls of fire with sleep storm, it's really annoying. Frankly, gear for fire and acid was really easy to farm, which is why I'm uh, Savant. So I didn't even farm someone, just sort of happened upon it. I guess I should try the water electric at some point. How am I afraid? I did a stupid... Arr. Somebody remove my remove fear, because it's supposed to last for 10 minutes. It should have been plenty. Since not dancing with everybody else right here. I was going to farm for a turbulent at bay. I done the quest once. And we just did an ecstatic group on Thursday and I got got one I think and got past another one. So now I'm good on turbulent at bays. Why that from a bard swashbuckler? Seemed to be a, a no brainer to get one of those for a DR breaker. Yes, Skunk, I was saying that earlier. That's why I turned mine off. Because it was that annoying. Uh, yeah. He's just really loud and annoying. So, he didn't last more than, I think, one and a half quests before I had to turn him off. He's just too loud. He was louder than my combat sounds. <laughs> We're split bad. Caster's clearing everything out on it. He's in a little bit of a pinch. Yeah. 
So I'm at the point, I think, where Epic Elite is more potentially deadly than guaranteed deadly, which I like. At least these early ones. The level one is it's much nicer than the uh, guaranteed death that it was. Let's see, I can probably last through this, maybe? Maybe not. Nope. I got caught on that pole right there. So of course I had to say something and died. Because that's how it works. Bringing you guys back to the shrine. Or I could just get you resurrected right here. You know. I appreciate a true resurrection. There you go, dude. Another shrine? Was there one like a cabin or something? I always get turned around in this quest. I don't do it often enough to remember the path. So I had to go just too far. I really liked the Ed Greenwood interview Cordovan played yesterday. That was awesome. Really interesting stuff to hear how he thinks about design of stuff and options and everything has to make sense within the world and that sort of thing. Oh, come on. He was dead. Thank you. I enjoyed watching the whole thing mm -hmm. pretty much. Uh, of course, it was so long, I had to take breaks here and there, but for the most part, I watched the whole thing, and it was good. Some people stopped by. Had some playing with the community. Some giveaways. Just a lot of fun stuff. Seems like there should be more official streams on the channel, but I understand that there's other work to do. You can't always do that. I like streaming on that channel as well. There were lots of people watching. There's pretty much consistently over 100 most of the day. The peak about, what, 160, I think, I saw? Some pretty good numbers. Excuse, that's almost double what he can get on Wednesday sometimes, that I've seen. Seems somebody got whoever died. How are we doing? That can't be right. I have the most kills. 
You can make out Yule Dithialin's form. She and her infiltrators... I have the most kills on E. Wow. That's unusual. <laughs> yeah, there were some fun questions and I think I like the more casual thing better. Oh, there were a lot of screenshots and comment the commentary thing and other things that can be considered dead air. Higher than normal, but for that length of stream, you gotta have some downtime. In fact, speaking of downtime, I might have some after this. Someone else take the tank. I'll just try to do some damage. Gotta be careful, I've only got two of those left. I like seeing the, uh, Crits for a thousand fairly often, that's cool. Whoa, that knocked me on my butt. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I think we need it. I think I'm starting to see why people like EE. E e. Because it is a bit of a challenge, it's not just a cakewalk. Now that I'm at the point where I can actually survive some of this, it's more fun. One more. Awesome. Yes. Good stuff. Now be careful. Don't everybody rush and open all of them at once. And look what happens. Everybody opens all at once. Ooh, the big top.
Alright, are we done with all the loot? Uh, that was an epic check. The uh, mimic. Yeah, that's cool. Do door up. I thought I was in the block area. There we go. So that was fun. Got some more checks off for EE content. Still didn't get my. Antique Great X completed though. All right, it's changing up for two hours, 41 minutes, 24 seconds at the moment. I, although some of that was the pre-roll I had up. I think I'm gonna take a break here for a couple minutes. Uh, let the cats out from where they were eating. We have to separate them because they have different food. One of them's older. And of course, they like each other's food. And the younger ones don't need as much fat, and the older one doesn't need as much protein. So it's a balance. I'm going to go do that and probably go ahead and get a sandwich or something for lunch. Scarf that down. Refill my water. Maybe get a soda or something and uh hopefully that'll address this headache so doesn't look like the dog needs to go out yet so that's good get my repairing and my selling done because otherwise i'll probably forget on the other side oh is that shroud still up no i didn't think it would be you never know sometimes shrouds stuff take a while that and put my BRB up. All right, good. I'll meet the mic here and I will see you in just a few more minutes. Thanks for watching everybody. Appreciate it. My by I mean skunk and Mary.
Alright, let's see. Looks like we're back. Yep, that's looking good. And I need to turn this off. There we go. Alright. Yeah, I rebooted the client. Um, and now I can tell it worked. Because I have a daily roll left. And it's the old one, probably. Yep. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, healing is good. Oh, stupid thing. This thing being over there is not. there. Oh, that's right, because I rebooted. Everything's reset. Please save all the locations of everything. I keep getting annoyed by having to move everything every time. Like, the store keeps spawning in the top right. I just move it down here where I want it. Thanks, Skunk. So, yes, hello again to Mary and Skunk. Hanging out. see what the groups look like, or I'll solo, or I'll switch characters, I don't know. So now I am VIP, officially, for the next 15 months. Which in some ways seems a waste, but in other ways seems like a good idea, so we'll see how it goes. Oh god, I got through some of those potions. Silver flame potions suck. Somebody's doing Sharn Syndicate for mimic hunting. They're already in there. I joined that Hound of Zoria just to get it done for the first time, but I have no idea where it is, and I know that I've seen that that's a thing. <clears throat> Yeah, I have to decide if I'm going to do the VIP for the SO or not, because they only play once a week, basically. But it's nice to have all that stuff available. Oh, I can go do delir the Terminal Delirium stuff. I haven't done that yet. That's awesome. Just shy of where I feel comfortable doing that. I'm level 27. Put all that gear on, I can take that big card, no problem. I think I got... Yeah. It was on stream the other day, I think I got killed in there. Oh... Oh yeah, power attack before I forget that. Oh, a 50 bowlers from my abbot the other day that didn't go very well. We tried... Three times and wiped? Three or four times, wiped every time. And most of us were over level. We almost had it. The first time the center scout didn't report where the asteroids were, he just said, right, um, okay, you're supposed to put which door you're in so I can tell which way I need to go. Not have to look back in chat to figure it out, because only left and center reported, I think. And then I went back and looked and found it. By the time I came back, the other scout had reported, so I knew it could, you know, by process elimination, could figure it out. But got in there, went to click on the boulders. Boulder hit me from behind, knocked me off the platform. I was dead. And everybody else in the roids was dead pretty quickly. Uh, the second time, what happened? Let's see. He did the same thing again. He didn't say he was at center for whatever it was, but I think it was on a different side. Anyway, um, 
got in there and there were like six or seven people in there. And two of them were facing outwards with the boulders. Two of us were facing inwards with the boulders and everybody else was standing up in the middle. So nobody was sleeping and two people weren't looking in. So I kept getting hit from behind me. I was taking out everything I could see, but then I got being hit behind me because somebody wasn't watching my back. And the third time, I don't even remember what happened the third time. It just didn't go well. And Ice died, I think, both of those. And at least one tile death. And it was just... All right, let's just re reset and try it again. Okay, let's reset and try it again. And then the last one was just out of time. So, yeah. As you enter Uth Lodge, you are greeted only by silence. Strange I would have liked to completion a chance of getting a quiver, because that's what I really want. A quiver. I, you know, I wouldn't say no to some of the other stuff I don't have yet, but I really want a quiver. I have a couple raids to get through that I haven't done yet. Hound vision and Lord of Blades, I think. Off the top of my head, those are the ones I haven't done. What? Did I forget something? Oh yeah, I forgot the second wave. Need to run some shrouds today if they're up. Deeper into the house, friend or foe, you will likely cross paths again. Probably should have grabbed that shot earlier than finishing the cabal chain, but oh well. Something rustles in the deep foliage of the room. I'm going slow this one. This one might not work. Yeah, we had a discussion our scatter group the other day. Oh, let's go to Wayloon to do these. Um, we haven't enlarged the dust yet. Well, yeah, but you can just skip. You can just use the... What's my joker as a VIP? Yeah, I'm not VIP. Neither is the SO. Oh. Yeah, and uh, Lords of Dust is 16, not 15. Which is really stupid. The gateway quest to get to the zone is higher level than the quest in the zone. That's awesome. I didn't really notice that before, but since we're doing, trying to do all the quests on Elite at level in the game, not skip around a bunch, you notice some things you don't normally do just by getting random pugs to get your levels. Of course, not being VIP is part of it, too. They're all VIP, so like, oh, we'll just do this, no problem. Yeah, that's not what everybody can do. But now I can. But then we have the SO. I don't know. Maybe I'll call the present and go ahead and do it. Maybe we'll play more together. Although they've been playing uh, Don't Starve quite a bit. Some other PS4 stuff, Vita stuff, some 3DS. Book, I, can... I am a harbor. You've heard of our order? 
As much by smell as by sight. Since he's knocked down, I'll go ahead and take him out. But he actually attacking me. Oh, mimic. Oh, nice. I wouldn't say I'm getting a lot, but I'm getting a decent number of mimics just playing. And everyone helps the card situation, so that's good. Looks like the SOS is going to be in great mood when they get home. Just got a text ranting about people that uh, are calling off on a Saturday. That bodes well. Yeah, I think on the deal, it's what, 667 a month or something ridiculous. It's not that bad. And speaking of the SO, hello! Are you on break? Oh, I'm going to outbreak, not to pull. Oh, good. It does work. You are a mod. I just saw or heard another text, so I'll go check that here. And get an outbreak. Nope, it's. Oh, yeah. So I got a, an email from Ouya last week. And they said, oh, by the way. Stands across the room. Heavy head breeze, Jaskier says. Take the key on the table. I forget which way it Adam's Family Pinball is now available on Pinball Arcade. And I was all, what the actual hell? I love Adam's Family Pinball. I've been wanting to get one of those machines forever. They've doubled or tripled in price since I first started looking many years ago. I used to play that every time I went, well, I was an arcade rat for a summer. I was there about every day and played a lot of Anna's Family Pinball. Awesome game. So I saw that and I was all, ooh, yeah, I need to get that somewhere, but I don't know. I don't really want to get out in the Ouya because we don't really play it that much. I love the Ouya as a concept console, but the implementation was not that great. So, yeah. But then I read up on forums and stuff and there's some hubbub about it so I'll wait till it settles down maybe wait till it's on a seam sale or something but I do love Adam Sealy Pinball and I do want to play that probably rather have it on the PS4 of anything maybe get a new controller for the PC but Really enjoy that. And it's so much easier than having a have a, a full size pinball machine in the house somewhere. They take up a lot of space and are pretty heavy. Time to 
With that, Head Priest Jaskier opens a door to the quarantine area. You go through and the quarantine area Smeran Uth appears. The infections are more advanced with him. Still haven't got the, quite the timing on that, uh whatever that one that counts down. And whatever divine tree I'm in. I have the timing for most of my fighter abilities down. Occasionally the speed boost trips me up, but usually I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I had a uh, full size. I think it's. Uh, I don't think there's a certain full size organ. One of the old, you know, big wooden Hammond things. That's how I learned to play. Um, and that was a pain. To do anything except just sit there, and it took up you know, half a living room. I actually have uh, two arcade machines in the house right now, and they are huge. Take up a lot of space. And moving them is a pain. They weigh... Like 800, 900 pounds, all told. Two pieces are like 200 pounds a piece, and then the other piece is like 400 pounds, something like that. Appliance dollies and those little furniture moving dollies help a lot. I haven't moved a pinball machine, I don't think. But I have moved these a couple times. Uh, Dirk's got a secret. Uh, shard. I'm running behind somebody who has an LFM up for what I'm doing, but they're ahead. Oh, I don't want to do insurance curse. I want to thorn ball. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. That's why, you know, you think it'd be neat to own some of this stuff, and then once you have it, you realize it's not all that great. I'd rather play... I had a Street Fighter machine for... Street Fighter 2... I don't know if it was Turbo or Championship or which version it was, but it was a Street Fighter 2 machine. And I didn't really enjoy it that much. Friends' kids would come over and they'd be hanging on the joysticks. and It came to me. It was free. Um, somebody didn't want to deal with moving it or whatever. And so I didn't have room for it, and I was like, I have room, I'll take it. And uh, didn't play it very often, and just wasn't as neat it was as it was supposed to be. It was a neat conversation piece, you know, when people were over here and there, but you, know, you play one round, and done. It's not quite the same as it being in the arcade when you're younger. And when it came to time to move, I actually sold it for a profit to somebody who was driving through. They were setting up a mini arcade in their bar or something like that. I don't remember exactly what they said they were doing with it, but they were had a tra U-Haul trailer and a big truck and they were driving around town that particular day looking for machines to put in their bar. They wanted a Street Fighter, so they were happy to pay for it. And I owned several machines before that I actually had in an arcade. Sort of a co-op thing that 
that was the better deal. Because <laughs> I owned them, and I could play them for free. But the rest of the time, they were in the arcade and making a little bit of money. Not much, but some. So, that worked out better. And then I sold those off because the arcade closed, and what, what was I going to do with them? So, another local arcade, one of them, and bought them off of me. And that worked out pretty well. The one of those machines, well, maybe two of them I would have liked to have now. But nothing I can do about that at the moment. And, uh, yeah. This waterfall remains clear. So these are actually my, let's see, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, these are my sixth and seventh arcade machines that I've owned. A friend of mine had an old Dragon's Lair with a Space Ace conversion. He could swap back and forth, and a Xevious. Did he have something else? I don't remember if he had a third one or not. I know somebody else had a Comet or Cyclone pinball. I don't remember which. Ride the Comet. It was a Cyclone, I think, because Cyclone's the one with the voice that says Ride the Comet. Which doesn't make much sense, but that's how it was. And that was neat when he had that for a while. I would, I had a chance to get an environmental disc of Tron that I really wish I could have done, but it was like four states away, local pickup only. And I don't think I had the money at the time. It was pretty cheap for what it was. I mean, it looked in pretty to be in pretty decent shape, if I remember right. But in Environmental Disciptron, uh, I've only played the, one of those once. Usually it's the other style, not the environmental one. Come on, dude, just die. You're you're dead, you just don't realize it. That is a ridiculous range on that. I was trying not to destroy the corruption until I had the dead mother killed and uh, didn't work that way. The environmental Decitron, um, Adam's Family Pinball. And then some of the other specialized games. I would love a crossbow. I used to really enjoy that game. But most of those got converted to other things. But they were not really practical to keep at home. If I had any other... If I had my own business somewhere, I'd probably look into getting some just for fun. But at the moment I'm doing the whole job hunt thing, which is annoying. I'm working on my resume. I have this I don't remember what, what they call themselves. Basically consultants that help you through the whole getting your resume all spiffied up and making sure you don't say or do the wrong thing in interviews and all that stuff. Working with them to get my resume up to par. Which I do appreciate that you know, my previous job included that as part of severance. So I sent my first draft of my new resume over and they said, yeah, that's a start, but you need to change this, 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 and this. So I gotta make those changes and uh, do that whole thing and then start looking for jobs. And 
I was kind of, I mean, between the fact that I had my last day of work and then I, well, while I was on vacation, and then came back to being sick and all that, I've been taking a little bit, I'm still working on stuff, but I've been taking a little bit to decompress from all that. And it's about the time where I need to start turning that around and really start concentrating on looking. At least some every day. But then yesterday, you know, I was doing taxes and getting those done for us. Stuff like that. While I was watching the stream. So. I've got seven that's going to last me a couple months, so it's not like I'm really rushing to get a job. But I know it's going to run out, and I need to get a job in the meantime. It's just tough, though, because I was telecommuting 100%. And the consultant was quick to tell me that that's hard to find to come into a position as a 100% telecommuter. They like to see you in the office for a bit first. And then maybe do partials and stuff like that. All of which means that I'm going to have to board dog every day if I do that, which is not going to be fun. Or really concentrate on training him to not freak out when we leave. That's going to be expensive to do and annoying. Light shines brightly from above. At the same time, I want to concentrate on getting my stream going more popular, hopefully. And at some point, maybe just streaming. That's a long ways away, though. Because OMG getting paid to play DDO and such eight hours a day. Really play eight hours a day, not work for the company and have to do other things, but really play. And, well, you know, chat, entertain, and interact, but play games a couple hours a day and get paid for it would be awesome. Even if it is a significant pay cut, it still would be fun. I've been watching uh, Professor Broman, who is fairly popular on Twitch. Uh, I think he got started mostly in speedrunning. And the other day he made several thousand dollars in just a couple hours. See all his notifications going up. One guy did like a 1.5k donation to him. But then he had other people doing $100. He had like 30 people doing $100 and a bunch of other people. And it was just ridiculous how much money he was making that particular day. Yeah. It's possible, but it is a lot of work. And I know he's put in a lot of work streaming eight hours a day, almost every day of the week, and doing marathons and 24 hour streams and charity events and going to the conventions and all that stuff. So, all that has paid off for him. And now he has shirts in partnership with Twitch and all this stuff. So, yeah. He actually said what his monthly internet bill was, and it was ridiculous, because it is a business line. And, uh, yeah, it was a ridiculous, like, $1,500 a month internet bill or something. He has two or three other streamers that live in the house with him. They, they all do their own thing, but they just happen to live together. They moved in recently. <clears throat> They figured, well, you know, we're all streaming, so we kind of understand that. And they're all on slightly different schedules, so not everybody's streaming at the same time. And they each have their own channels, and it's not like they combined into one channel or anything. But it's interesting. And he is pretty entertaining to watch, so... I'm trying to learn from the other streamers, and especially some of the successful ones, on what to do, and some not successful ones, what not to do. Um, 
and uh, try to figure that out, but it'll, it's a long road to get there. It's taken him a couple years to get there. I just started, so I know I'm nowhere close to that. Excuse me. So yeah. And I, actually, the other day, the other week, wasn't the other day, it was the other week, we were in the next city north for a bit, and somebody was talking about streaming there, and it's like, oh yeah, this guy on YouTube makes $3 million a year from just the views of his videos. These are already made in his collaborations with other YouTubers and stuff. And he was talking about, they had Twitch going on all their TVs. It was like a, one of those used game, st used game stores that has um, pods that you can rent for computer games. So people were playing League of Legends and something else in there while we were there. But they had Twitch up on all these TVs watching somebody play. I don't remember. What, it was some horror game. I don't remember what it was. Evidently this the, whoever was streaming was known for playing horror games, and his reactions are commentary to it, so, yeah, interesting stuff. The problem is trying to figure out how to fit that in with the job hunt, because I know I need to stream more so that I'm on more so more people can find me and the people that do know me that I'm here you know know when and where I'll be um, and to a certain extent DDO stream is not good for that part of it as far as you know it's not helping my channel directly but indirectly I think it is a lot because a lot more people will watch DDO stream um, with all the promo and stuff that Gordo does. So it's a good intro, but then I need to have regular other days where I stream so people know that, hey, I will be streaming here and there. People that are on at those times normally will get used to watching me. And then again, you know, I need to be more entertaining sometimes, I'm sure, and figure out better interactivity and all that stuff. So, we'll see what happens, but I'm hoping that this takes off a bit more than it has. On that note, I appreciate Skunk and Mary you watching. I do appreciate that. You were there at the beginning. You knew me back when there were only two people on my channel. Yeah, dude also gets like 4,000 people at a time viewing him. Has over a million different people watching various times and all that, so numbers help. I have some things I want to do, too. I want to do a intro to streaming DDO. I know there's been several people that have had questions about how to get started what to use and all that. It'd be easier to point in my own videos and get that going than whatever random video I looked up for them. Um, especially DDO specific stuff like covering the chat with something interesting and all that. Um, excuse me. I had some of the tutorials I've done a couple here and there about different things. There's a lot of DDO videos out there, but a lot of them are out of date. So I think it would be good to have some more current ones and some of that stuff. It might drive traffic. I need to cross-promote from YouTube back to Twitch more, I think. And actually po get my uh, Twitter to be public, not private. I hesitate to do that, but I think if I'm really going to be doing this, 
kind of stuff, I need all that to be public. And of course, I need to post more on my site, which I started the first two DDO stream things. I have posts up about those. And then I just sort of stopped and haven't picked it back up. So I really need to get back into doing that. So there's another thing. And that also means, like, when I host studio stream, or if I do something like this, I want to go back and get the video and put up some uh, time marks to say, hey, here's the various things that happen in this video. Kind of like the show notes for a podcast where they break out, okay, at this time this conversation happened. Do that sort of thing. I think that'll help people getting into videos if they want to see just certain something, and then if I want to go back and refer to that certain something that happened, it would be easier to find. At this point I just have a lot of video that I haven't gone back and done anything with. So I just post the raw. I, pres I presume if I highlight stuff and uh, so on Twitch that it'll help as well. Because I haven't done much of that either. Since I first started playing around with it. You find yet another I'm getting more comfortable with it though. I also want to go back and play more Rollers of the Realms and other PS4 games and see if I can get people watching me through other games as well, not just DDO. Although, you know, the primary is DDO. Hopefully for the next 15 months at least. Although when as Shadowrun Online keeps coming closer and closer to being out, I'll probably dip into it here and there. Whether or not I broadcast that, I'm not sure. Yet, I'm not really sure how much of that I'm going to be playing, which is sad considering how much I spent on it. That's one of the reasons I didn't subscribe to DDO last year on a 15-month deal. Is well, Shadowrun Online is supposed to be coming out, so I paid a lot of money on Kickstarter to play that. I'm going to be playing that, and I tried the beta or alpha or whatever it was, and was so disappointed. That, uh, yeah. Did I not trigger you? I thought I triggered you. Stupid thing. I think it was something if I could get into speedrunning something, that would also be a big boost to people and then go to one of the GDQ events. That'd probably be a big boost, but I don't know if I have the patience for speedrunning. As far as some of the official stuff, I mean, speedrunning DDO is different. I like you know, trying to efficiently zerg, let's say, through stuff. Ah, oh, there it is. It shows down here for the VIP bonus. I forgot where it showed. Text the SO back. All right. Well, well, well. What else do I want to do? It's about time to do the daily stuff that everybody does. The Vaughn and the Whiz King and all that. Let's see. 
Uh, I just so don't like giant hold. <laughs> There's so much giant hold going on, and I just. If they had better uh, teleporter guys to get you closer to each thing individually, that'd be better. So it's already in progress, and I have to go to the wiki, look up where it is, figure out which teleporter I have to go to, hit that teleporter, and then walk to it, and then hope they're not done. It's just a pain. Or just do like. Um, orchard. Walk in, teleport, done. You're there. Very quick, because you can airship right to there and then teleport from there. It's just a lot easier. I'd like them to do a transportation pass, let's call it. Get things consistent, like all the teleporters need to hit all the same locations. And airship portals need to be a little more consistent, I think. And yeah, the, tele the teleport spell locations, which are completely different, uh, that took some getting used to. Still not used to it yet. What was I going to do? I don't even remember. I presume I'm going here to sell. And a bit of lag every time. What? And then there's my mom sending emails to my phone as a text message. Which is only 140 characters, so you don't get anything. I'm not going to mess with that right now. Yeah, I agree with that. Skunk. I just don't like the quests in Giant Hole, and I don't like the area. I don't like all the purple and stuff. I mean, it. I. it is neat as a difference, but as far as enjoying playing it, no, not at all. I think the desert's different for me because I actually know my way to some of it. At least the ones that are run every day. So that's a bit of a difference. I don't really need the potions of invisibility on this character. I feel like dealing with passing through the bank, so there. But, I mean, people play those all the time. And then my bar just ran those on Elite yesterday, I think. I found a group to do that. Let's see, 15 or so. Um, and I just went ahead and did it just to get them out of the way and get some XP. But I do not like those quests at all. Do not like the area, do not like the quests. Just, bleh. I have a general idea where the quests are now. I mean, I've, I've done them enough now that I s kind of get used to some of it, but. I don't know the quest by name. It's when I get in there, I'm like, oh yeah, it's this quest. All right, cool. There is a shroud up. I hate to do this because I know it's boring watching somebody sit and wait for a shroud to start. Don't like doing that, but I really want to get a start on Vars second uh, thing.
That's a lot of why I don't run a lot of the quests, is just I, if I don't know where they are, then I'm not going to have the group guide me. If the group's starting and, you know, they're not... They're just uh, starting and they haven't been there yet, so I have a chance to follow somebody, then I'll do that, maybe, but... Yeah, that whole joining after in progress thing not happening. I may as well just go to Meridia. Should check my bank though. Oh. So yeah. It I'm saying earlier I did this respec so I could have this fire loan to bundle form, which I didn't have before. Somehow I missed it when I was doing the enhancements. I meant to take it and then took something else instead. So did a complete enhancement respec. I think I helped myself a little bit more power. I was going to check on what shards I have already. Let's see, I've got a shard of great power and a shard of great power. So I need shards of power and shards of supreme power. Is that the worst one? That's why I didn't join that group earlier. Yeah, I've seen a video on how to get to Hand of Zoriat, but have never done it and have never really explored the subterrain at all. And a lot of that stuff too that I haven't really done, don't really do much is, okay, am I flagged for this? There really needs to be a better way to tell if you're flagged for something in the group panel. You know, I didn't apply to the player's cancel. Um, but I was, had I done so, I had some opinions. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you're doing all this cool stuff. Will you fix the UI, please? <laughs> There's just some of these things in the UI that are so annoying and they could be done so much better. That's what I really like to do is UI. If I had to have an office job or maybe UI consultant, or that would work too. But so you see so much in the way of bad UI out there in, in games and apps and everything. It'd be nice to work on improving that. So you go in the group panel and it's like, oh, quest the shroud. I want to get more information on the shroud. We well, double click and it says request to join the group. No, that should be over here. If you double click on the shroud here, this should give you more information on the shroud, the quest, and my flag. There should be a little icon here saying that you're flagged or icons showing what you completed it on, or there should be some more information here besides just the name of the quest. And that little bit of information on the hover isn't enough. I need to know where the quest giver is. I need to know the journal stuff, basically. Um, I want to know exactly where it is, the quest entrance is, and uh, whether I've done it or not, whether I'm going to get a bravery bonus for it, you know, all that stuff. This 
this whole thing should be redesigned to be a lot better. And of course, be able to put epic difficulties on there. And the um, when you create an LFM, be able to search or restrict a level range or there's all sorts of things that need to be able to be done here. Who interfaces? Okay, I guess. Friends interfaces. Okay, I guess. I really would like an account level friends though. Guild is okay. Let's see what if we just get an eighty. We just got eighty not too long ago. Ah, uh, Stormy Memorial two. Eighty-five is the Grand Library too. We're moving up pretty fast, though. We had our static group finished uh, the Giant Hold Saga, and everybody took the favorite reward. So that was a nice little boost to Guild, or not favorite, renowned. That was a nice little boost. What you need to figure out on this character is how to rearrange everything. And then hotkey another row of spells. Another bar with a spell somehow. So that I can get That would give me, what, 24 I could get, because I've got 12 buttons on my mouse. If I could hotkey, that would give me 24. That should be enough for most situation, combat situations. And the rest of the stuff I can just click like I normally do. Do I have any Epic Destiny stuff to put on here? Burn, harmonic Resonance. Oh, that's nice. Put that down here somewhere. Uh, is that only working quest? So I logged out last night and I saw this toxic presence name and icon. I had no idea what it was doing. So I didn't know what happened. So I logged in and figured it out. Like, oh, it's just that turning off. Some of these abilities turn on and off are weird how that works. Monic Resonance would be nice in my bard once I get it up there. I need to get some uh, sonic spell power on my bard. I actually need to rebuild it as a uh, kind of Monte Cristo. so that it's actually better to play. I think I fixed it a little bit, but still. 
I had everything in charisma and haggle. Everything that would get me more plat from selling stuff so that I could pass everything over to the bar and sell it and build up my bank. Then I was comfortable for a while, not wanting to respec it because I had plenty of plat, and now I'm back to needing more plat. It adds up after a while, but it's also a pain in the neck to do. Oh, I know this is fascinating broadcasting. Just sitting here, staring at the Grandmaster of the Twelve. And Dragon's not moving, so that's fascinating. I'm sure. Anything else going on? Like This is my fear, which is why I don't usually do this kind of stuff. I want this Shroud to happen. I much prefer to have it on Var than Shaw. Although Shaw needs four more runs to the 40th, so get another thing. But Var here needs, uh, let's see, rate completion. That's the thing I was going to do. Was anything on commands? A lot of people were surprised about the commands. Oh, a third person joined. Yeah, I've got three shrouds down on this character, so I've got 17 more to do. I need to get at least the 20. That way I can wear my hit point out of my spell point item that I hit point item that I built. Yay. Go hit points. Those are handy. I figured this was the best thing to do for hit points. Um, I put it on gloves. And uh, because I can cast both Blur forever and uh, Displacement, I didn't see the need in going with uh, Smoke. But Fortification is always handy, and the protection isn't bad. So Constitution skills, meaning Concentration. Again, useful for Sorcerer. And of course, the hit points is the main thing. So hit points and fortification were the main reasons I went this way. Stone skin is handy when, as now, I'm out of stupid material components for stone skin. I can just use my clicky, and it works just as well. So, but then I need to get some spell point con up goggles, and then I will be set for the moment on that. Um, I have, I want to get the scepter, whatever it is, from Assaulted Summerfield. Because I already have the one from Giant Hold. I have the blue one from Giant Hold, I need the pink one from there. And that'll be good for, oh, fourth person joint, yes. For my starting gear. Um, if I, Iconic which my plan is, is to Iconic either Shade Archive or Blade Forged and Sorcerer. Not sure which way I'm going yet, but I'm trying to get some of that gear together so that I'll be able to just hit the ground running basically and have some good stuff ready to go. Which is also why I wanted to try the Fire Elemental form now while I still can, because I'm probably not going to be Pure Sorcerer ever again. <laughs> the way things are going. Um, the way my, I think things will be going, I should say. So, we'll see. But I do want to use the Iconics to start not at level 1. So here's a question. If, I, if I'm a Drow, I should... Should I lesser reincarnate before I ITR? So that I burn the lesser reincarnate on the 32 point upgrade, which doesn't happen. And then when I ITR, it will be 34 or 32 or however that works for Drow, because it doesn't work the same way as it does everybody else.
Probably have enough to complete. Well, probably have enough to complete on hard at the moment. Let's see what level people are. Yeah. Shouldn't be a problem completing on normal or hard. Might run into a wall of death problems. Excuse me. All right, so what I'm asking is, according to what I read on Wiki, the first time you TR, it doesn't do an upgrade because it gets burned. Because you're already drow and you already have those bonuses, right? So if I would use a lesser heart, would that take that place of what would normally be the upgrade, like it does for everybody else, basically, from 28 to 32? Or is Drow considered 32 already, so that wouldn't do anything. I, I don't know whether I should burn that hard or not. It doesn't matter. Probably I could just do use the plain old lesser heart and say good enough. <laughs> Are you dreaming, dog? You seem to be sleeping, but your tail's wagging. Yeah, it's just I know, I know drow are weird, and I don't know which way I should go with that. To, if I'm burning a lesser heart just to burn lesser heart, or if it would actually be a benefit. So, just curious. I'm a ways away from that. 